Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorgia.com answering the questions I get from around the globe. Let's get started. This first one comes from Aiden from San Antonio, Texas, where I live. Aiden is a good friend of mine that uh, is one of the people from Facebook. So, Aiden, I'm glad uh, you sent me this question. He says, Hi Dino George. Hi Aiden. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, what is the largest meat eater ever found in the United States? Thanks, DG, your friend Aiden. Well, Aiden, first of all, yes, you are my friend, and uh, I'm glad to hear from you. The largest meat eater ever found in the United States is Tyrannosaurus rex. He is the largest meat eater, but they found skeletons of two other predatory dinosaurs that might have even grown larger than Tyrannosaurus rex. One is named Saurophaganax, and the other is named E. Panterius. Now, these two dinosaurs, some paleontologists believe that those are, they're one and the same dinosaur. So, whichever one, um, whichever name you want to go with, E. Panterius or Saurophaganax, whatever the case, they appear to be very big. But see, they haven't found the whole skeleton yet, so they have to kind of sort of guess at how big they were. Some people guess it was bigger than Tyrannosaurus rex. And if they are correct, then that would make Saurophaganax or E. Panterius the biggest meat eater in the United States. But right now, it's T-Rex, baby. He holds the record. Okay, uh, I think this is pronounced Latchland from Townsville, Australia. Latchland, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Hey, DG, I have some questions on Pachycephalosaurus. And then he writes, phew, I hope I spelt that right. You did, by the way. Nice job, man. Uh, I read that Pachycephalosaurus has a wider pubic bone that might indicate that they gave birth to live young. What are your thoughts on this? Well, that's a great question. For years, people have asked me about whether or not I think some dinosaurs gave live birth. Some of the really big sauropods, I think there's a possibility that they may have. I'm talking about the big ones, um, you know, like uh, Astrodon and uh, Brachiosaurus and some of those guys. They very, very well may have. Now, with Pachycephalosaurus, I have never had the opportunity to study anything other than the skull of a Pachycephalosaurus, so I can't speak intelligently about that question about whether they gave live young or not, birth to live young. But I will tell you this. Um, we know that dinosaurs have a relationship with reptiles, and there are some reptiles that give birth to live young. So it's not un, un, um, unreasonable to think that some dinosaurs may have done the same thing. Uh, secondly, it says, I personally believe that Pachycephalosaurus and its cousins may have used the bone on their head to smack into fruit trees and knock down the fruit or even to knock down the entire tree to eat the leaves at the top. Uh, do you think it's possible or likely? And he writes, P.S. Be honest as possible. I won't be offended. First of all, um, Latson, I would never say anything to offend anyone. So I may disagree with you, but I would never do it to offend you. So I appreciate that you wanting to know the truth. And I will tell you, I, I tell the, exactly what I think with all these questions. Okay. Um, to use his head to knock down trees, that would be kind of difficult because Getting a running start would allow you to hit it, but hitting the tree and shaking something loose from it is different than being able to uproot the entire tree. They don't have the body mass to allow them to have that much momentum to pull the roots out of the ground. That takes a tremendous amount of force. And really the most effective way to pull a tree up, or a plant for that matter, is to pull it straight up so that you're not fighting uh, all of the dirt around it if you pull it straight up. If you try to push it over, on the back side of the tree, you have uh, the roots digging in harder, and on the front side, you're trying to pull them up and forward. That's just not plausible. So I don't believe that they would knock down a tree, but certainly if they were wanting to get something out of a tree, they might have the ability to do that. I personally believe that those domes on top of the head were probably utilized in combat or for defense, or even one guy uh, suggested that um, Pachycephalosaurs may have had an omnivorous diet. If they did, they may have used that dome to, to debilitate prey, to knock prey down and eat it. It's a great mystery, and I wish I knew the answer to it. Okay, um, Jim from Charleston, West Virginia says, Do you think it's possible that Spinosaurus was more of a fish eater than a predator? That's my theory, and that explains why he had a spine like dorsal fin. Also, you once said that in episode 11, the Spinosaurus would kill T-Rex. But in episode 24, I think you then said T-Rex would probably win. I think Spino would win, uh, would, would have trashed the uh, uh, 
I think Spino would have been trash because uh, T-Rex was just too big. Which do you think would win? Okay, Jim, uh, I've always felt that if those two animals were to meet, they lived at two different times in two different places. But if they were to meet, in my opinion, Tyrannosaurus Rex was far superior to Spinosaurus and would have killed him. So if I've said otherwise, then I simply misspoke. I, I've always felt that Spinosaurus was absolutely um, no match for a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And as to your question about being a fish eater, yeah, most of the evidence that I've looked at suggests to me that it would have preyed upon fish as probably the main part of its diet. But you're still talking about a giant dinosaur, man. Nothing to, nothing to scoff at. This guy was a monstrosity. And so he certainly may have been capable of killing smaller game. I just don't think his jaws and his snout were really designed for catching big game. Okay, my buddy Rodrigo from Monterey, Mexico. Hey, George, it's been a really long time since I have not had a chance to write you a question. Hope you're fine, man. I am Rodrigo. It's good to hear from you. It's always good to hear from you. And I hope you and your family are doing well. Um, okay, basically he says, um, um, uh, how do you mount complete skeletons of dinosaurs? Uh, paleontologist Hector Rivera said that they couldn't put the originals out. How do they do that? Well, Rodrigo, basically what they do is in most cases, they make a mold of each bone and uh, also fill out the missing bones with molds. And then what you see in most museums are the mounted reproductions. Uh, the problem with mounting authentic dinosaurs is that they weigh a lot, they're very fragile, and it is incredibly expensive to mount an authentic dinosaur skeleton. I would say probably in 90% of the museums in the world, what you see are cast reproductions of the original dinosaurs. Now that's not always true. I mean, if you've ever been to the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, it is a magnificent museum, a spectacular museum. And um, certainly the Carnegie has authentic dinosaurs, but that's not common. Uh, so the reason why the paleontologists told you they couldn't is probably because of the weight, because of the expense, and because of the fragility of the bones. They break very easily. All right, Ahad from Albert Canada, Alberta, Canada says, Hey DG, I'm your biggest fan in Alberta. Nice to hear that, buddy. I'm glad to hear that. Um, he says, I love your work on paleontology. My question is, could Spinosaurus grow to 69 feet in length in the right habitat? And then he writes, you, you're super awesome, fantastic. That's one word. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, buddy. I think you're super awesome, fantastic, really cool Lorino. That's a new word I just made up. Wow, isn't that a cool word? All right. Um, yeah, could Spinosaurus reach 69 feet in length? That's big. That's really big. Is it possible? It is. In the right environment, with the right amount of food? Certainly it's possible. So yeah, I think he could reach that size. Man, that'd be a whopper. All right, finally, Cameron from Denham Springs, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Cameron, I ate something in Louisiana one time called boudin. Oh man, did that stuff taste great, but it nearly killed me. That was the spiciest stuff. And I live in San Antonio where our Mexican food is spicy. Oh my gosh, boudin, woohoo! That's some tough stuff, brother. Don't ever send me boudin. I loved it, but uh, I almost died for two days later. He says, first of all, I'm 12. That's awesome. But I've been studying dinosaurs since I was a kid for 10 years. Well, good for you, man. He said, Spinosaurus um, could only take on small dinosaurs. Uh, and, and you may be right, I agree. He said, but Jack Horner made a big deal out of T-Rex being a scavenger. Well, I disagree, but on YouTube, people do not agree with me. Please help me get rid of the dispute. T-Rex would own a Spinosaurus. Um, I have a video giving my full reasons. First of all, Cameron, I do not believe that Tyrannosaurus Rex was a scavenger. I just don't. I think all the evidence proves or suggests that he was not a scavenger. He's too big. He can't hope to find something that died within walking distance. I just don't think that's plausible. But as for you wanting to get people to agree with you, always keep in mind, Cameron, that Paleontology and science is not about making people agree with you. It's about voicing your ideas and then hopefully swaying people to believe what you say. But if you try to make them agree with you, you'll generally find that people will draw a line in the sand and just disagree just because they don't want to agree simply because now they see you as an adversary. S uh, state your opinion, why you believe what you do, and if people accept it, that's okay. And if they don't accept it, that's okay too. That's what makes science so much fun. All right, you guys, write to me at dinosaurgeorge.com. Send me your questions. I'll do everything I can to answer them. But remember, we get hundreds a day, and it is almost impossible to answer them all. Until next time, for you young people, practice your reading. For everybody out there, let's use good manners. And everybody, take care of yourself and take care of the people around you. I'll see you soon.